In the area surrounding the park, human pressure has done away with the green areas and their wild animals. Many predators have been exterminated, and only an occasional leopard can still be found on the preserve. But with man's arrival to Keoladeo, a new hunter has appeared. A hunter which, like its wild cousins, hunts in groups. Some of the dogs in bordering communities have become wild and hunt inside the national park. They look for sick or young animals which cannot flee due to the water surrounding the elevated areas. And they are terribly effective. The dominant pair begins to devour the young chital. The third dog, occupying a lower rank within the group, helped in the hunt, but is not allowed to taste the catch until the dominant members have had their fill. Like their cousins, the Kuanis, the wild dogs of India, they have a very strong social structure which allows them to have a very high percentage of success in their hunting endeavors. But for those of lower rank, it is a frustrating situation, and they react by scaring deer, the only ones who will eat after them. The dogs remain permanently alert. The presence of wild dogs in Keoladeo is a threat to wild animals and the guards pursue them implacably. Since this is open flat land, their hunting is usually seen by visitors who immediately notify the guards. The more experienced dominant dogs know this and they will flee, but the hungry helpers can do nothing more than wait for the moment when their appetite will be satiated. When the two leaders leave the cadaver and prudently begin to withdraw, the unhappy helper sees that its time has come and does not realize that time is running out. The Keoladeo Ghana National Park is visited each year by thousands of nature lovers and especially bird lovers. Tourism provides income which is used to maintain the preserve. Thus, visitors guarantee its continuation. But it hasn't always been this way. When hunting was banned, the viceroys and maharajas were replaced by tourists who were disrespectful of the environment and the domestic livestock of the inhabitants of neighboring villages. To prevent this lamentable situation, in 1981, Barhaptpur was given the rank of a national park, at which time it was named Keola de Ogana. Since then, tourists, and particularly local ones, have become much more aware of the need to take care of this small natural gem. Keoladeo Ghana is a minuscule drop of greenness 
in an overpopulated state. Most of the parks in India were the hunting grounds of princes and maharajas, but Keoladeo is the only one in which the habitat was created by a maharaja himself. This makes the park extremely dependent on man's provision and control of the water, i.e. it makes it extremely vulnerable. But despite its artificiality, its vulnerable dependence and its small size, millions of birds from Europe and Asia need it for their migration. For local dwellers, the fertility and richness of Keladeo is the work of Shiva, the god to whom the temple is dedicated and after which the park is named. Keladeo Ghana really does seem to be a miracle. are fed by rainwater and by the water brought in by canal from the Gambir and Banganga rivers. There are no natural springs. The actions of Kishan Singh, the Maharaja of Bharatpur did the rest, demonstrating to what point the actions of man, which generally destroy the environment, can fortify it and cause the life inside it to multiply.